one, go. Hey guys, welcome back. We're obviously back again for reviewing this week. Megas XLR brain work don't. Andy, help. There's no helping the doomed. <laughs> Do you think this my, is charity? My brain, my brain shut off for a second. Oh, the brain damage is real. All right. I well, I can't. I need the sh I need the I can't do words good shirt. I can't do words good, dude. That shit. You know what? We need to find. We need to find whoever made that shirt and make it like and just like put like our little logo. Like keep everything the entire same, but like have like a little logo for us and just be like, "Yep, this is our official shirt." I don't do words I'm, good. <laughs> I'm pretty sure Rooster Teeth would sue us. Probably. For copyright, considering okay. Rooster Teeth. Okay. Not to mention, I don't want to piss them off. I like Rooster Teeth. But, <laughs> but like, it's, it's it's eerily accurate at this point. I guess. I anyways. Up anyways. We've already gone off subject. Woo! This week, Megas XLR. Andy. I loved it. It was awesome. Super nostalgia driven. What do you think? What it, like... Do you, would you recommend watching this? All right. All right. All right. Honest, honest opinion. Okay. I don't think it would hold up if it were released in this era. Oh, no. It definitely wouldn't. I completely okay. agree. It has way, way, way too many 90s references. That, that being said... This thing is a fucking time capsule. <laughs> like, my fucking god. I'm, okay, I've never seen this show when it was first aired. I just never saw it. Okay? I didn't do the whole tsunami thing. I had younger brothers. It was a shit show. Right? <laughs> Watching this show, I felt old as fuck. <laughs> All right? Like, I'm all like, time has not treated me well. <laughs> <laughs> what have I done with my life? But, like, all in good ways. Like, life has sucked and things have gone horribly astray, but I'm not even mad. <laughs> like, <laughs> I'm, I'm almost tempted to say that this is one of the most postmodern shows I've ever seen. What do you mean by postmodern? Well, you know what postmodernism is, right? It's where everything is what it isn't. Oh. Right? So the person from the future can't can't drive the futuristic death machine robot because now it's stick shift. <laughs> it's also what... uses it also uses game controllers. No, 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 no. No, no. It get, it gets better from here. The one with illusions of grandeur is the most useless motherfucker on the face of the earth. The, oh yeah, Jamie. The biggest idiot, the fattest fuck, <laughs> is the one who got the machine that's literally eons from the future back working with a fucking car as a head. And he got it from the local dump for two dollars that he didn't even he didn't even pay him for. Like, I love the backstory as to how he got it. He's like, he's just shifting through some junk, and he's just like, "How much for this junk?" The uh, the dude in the junk yeah. yard. He's just like two bucks. How about this? Everything in two, bucks. two bucks. Two bucks. Just pull something down, and then the robot gets revealed. Two bucks, eh? <laughs> Oh my god, so... I just love when they fly over later, he's like, WHERE'S MY TWO BUCKS?! Alright, so, yeah, oh god. Where do, where do we go with this show? So, I, you never answered, do you recommend it? For well, like, no, no, that's, somebody, that's... For, some, who's, for somebody who liked 90s cartoons. Well, that's, that's, that's what I'm trying to get at, is like, for... For a nor for a younger audience, they're not gonna get jack shit out of this show. Like, 
like don't get me wrong there's some decent action but like it's not animated super well there's a whole bunch of jokes that will go over people's heads nowadays fair enough but that so, being said an older audience would find this goddamn hilarious like our age group goes back and is all like holy shit they're fucking power rangers and fucking sailor moon and like yeah which obviously don't have as big of a presence as it once did like i like how every that single sh- that was, those were the uh, shit when we were kids almost every single episode ended with the new jersey getting destroyed oh no it was jersey city and he never had to face any consequences for it. I, I, I'm tempted to say it's like Space Dandy, where it's just alternate universes because, like, fuck no, coherency. No, no. Th- this is what this show taught me when I was younger. Obesity is okay, and the same with overeating. If violence isn't working, you're not using enough of it. It's okay to destroy stuff and not have to worry about repercussions. And everybody else can fuck off. Oh, okay, well, actually... And duct- correction, duct tape can fix nuclear reactors. Yeah, that's true. That one is true, though. <laughs> that that itself was hilarious. Like, the fusion core or whatever. It, it's, it's just... The like, coop, it is co- overheating! Just completely covered it in duct tape. Works now. He's just like... It's just like, without that, we're doomed. Like, oh gosh, I can't remember, like, what triggered it. And it's like, it's like, without something to stick it together. Stick together? I'll be right back. Just go, just like, has his seat go down into Megas' core. Comes back up, it's like, power levels are stabilizing. Coop, what did you do? Oh, I, I fixed it. <laughs> and then the core is just covered in duct tape. Yep. <laughs> oh my gosh, that well, is so... It's- that's part of the funny thing too is like again it's part of that postmodernism like there's this huge futuristic like machine that will explode and take out the entire earth if it's not fixed what's the solution duct tape (laughs) yeah (laughs) dude coop was awesome okay my uh i so I was like, I got or I was telling my mom because obviously I was, I was talking to my mom because I'm going back to school and stuff, right? Yeah. And I'm talking with her, and I'm like, I have to watch the show, and she's like, Oh, cool. Well, what's it about? And my explanation, I think, hit the nail right on the head. I'm curious. All right. So think back to the '90s, okay? They take a whole bunch of 10-year-olds from the 90s and ask them what their favorite shows are. Right? Okay. All right. Then they put all of those shows together in a hodgepodge of bullshit, right? And redneck the crap out of it. (laughs) And that is the show. That is... That almost sounds pretty accurate. Like... It doesn't get much more redneck than like what? It, what is it? A uh, Camaro on a, on the top for a head? I think it might be a Camaro. Your robot has flame paint, an eight ball, and an eyeball. Like it's got it's got that one trucker like chick, like silver chick magnet or whatever painted on. It has the horn from uh, the Dukes of Hazard as a plot point. <laughs> yep. I don't know if you remember that, but it was in there. I just, it was like, there's just so many things, and like every episode. He oh he's like oh yeah check out this thing I added to Megas, or th- you had Keeve okay because the three main characters are Coop which is the pilot slash fat redneck, you've got Jamie who is the he's the one that like always has like sinister ideas and like gra- like 
ideas of grandeur and like ways that he, you could use the robot to basically conquer the world. And ten out of ten useless. And get chicks. Yeah. Which... And then you had Kiva, the girl from the future, who was set, like the the whole plot point as to how Megas came about is in the future, the whole the Earth gets conquered by a group of aliens called the Glorf, and. They uh, like the human resistance ended up capturing a rare prototype robot from the Glorf that can time travel. And what they were gonna do is the humans were gonna take the robot back in time to win to the decisive battle between the Glorf and the humans because the the robot would have helped win the fight for the humans because of how advanced it was. Well doesn't really happen like that and then they get blasted into like the modern present day or whatever i quotes around present now nowadays and that's when uh coop finds it and that's when everything happens and it's and, just and now we're going to completely ignore the glorf for the next seven episodes yeah the glorf come back every now and then but but then yeah and kiva is like the super serious one who's like she's like She's she has like some future stuff and like she knows she's like an actual like good fighter and like technically a good pilot. And Dude, that was it's that just, was the thing in the nineties though. Like it was always the strong female. Yeah. Like ser but super it, serious one. It was just really funny because like every time something bad happened, it's just like <laughs> like right away it's just like where's where's the time capacitor? The what? The time capacitor, the ability, the thing that lets you travel through time. Coop just kind of looks up and has a flashback to him just smashing it in the fucking junkyard. Dude, there's... So <laughs> like, every time, Kiva's just like, Mega should be equipped with... Oh, yeah. And then it just shows Coop, like, either just breaking it or just damaging it. Don't worry. It's, Don't worry. I he's fit the such sound. an idiot. How'd you fit the sound system in? Wait, was oh. there anything necessary in there? <laughs> but that's oh. what, like that's what makes it postmodern though, is because literally the person who's making all the adjustments and like actually making the thing work has no idea what the fuck they're doing. I want to know where he gets the resupply on rockets and stuff. Like, they never explain that. Dude, uh, this, again, it's more of a 90s thing, but, like, don't explain shit. Like, that's... Just like his way of manually operating Megas is to use a DDR pad. Do you remember that? Yeah. Like, oh, that was fantastic. No, when Jamie has the fucking car which he can't drive because it's stick shift, and he has to fucking pilot Magus with the fucking, like, Pong and... <laughs> like the Atari yeah, I'm like, and shit. I'm like, dude, this is so dated. <laughs> this was date. This was a dated reference before this show, which is already dated. Like... <laughs> <laughs> it was it's so good it's such a blast from the past dude i'm not That's... i'm not gonna lie okay so uh what 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 do you think the age cutoff is like millennial like is it a millennial thing like millennials what? wouldn't get it what is a what defines a millennial because i've heard like four different definitions okay millennials are aughts they they're born in the aughts the zero zeros they're born Okay, so we, I don't know. I think if you like, you would because have they to be, be born... okay. So let's put it this way: the millennials start; they're like seventeen now. Like, that that's is, like okay. the start of the age group of the millennials. Actually, no. I'd say the cutoff is probably like if you were born in about ninety six, like ninety five, ninety six. Okay, fine. We'll go nine. Whatever. The only reason why I say that is because that's literally two thousand. Or yeah, that's literally two thousand. And if they're two thousand, they'd be aughts, and you can't have aughts being a thing, so they're millennials. 
Sure. That's how the naming thing goes. Anyway, so what age is like the cutoff to people getting these jokes? Like the how young, like the youngness. Yeah, like how how like how far back do you have to go for like these references to still be a thing? Because, like, oh, Power, Power Rangers is still a reference. So Power Rangers stuck around, but, like, the, uh... I'd say, I'd say, like, about age 19 would probably be the cutoff. 19. Like, 19, 20. But, to be fair, I have met really, really dumb 20-year-olds. Dude, I'll go... I, I, I'd be tempted to say, if they're of drinking age, at the moment where we are throwing this video up, you have enough references to get, like, actual, like, good... That that or like you were alive during that time and you kind of should understand these references. Yeah, or at least or have, at least have an that. appreciation for them for what they yeah. are. Yeah, right. Be like, wow, I remember that. Now the only other way I'd suggest it to somebody younger than that is if they are curious about what the '90s were like or like what it was when I was a kid. Like, you just throw this up. It is like it has stayed in its time zone. Oh my gosh! I was just thinking about the cre one of the credit sequences where like the city's destroyed and Coop's just like, I could go for a burger, or twelve, or twelve. Yeah, no, just and then, then he they he literally picks up the entire restaurant with Megas and just to do the drive through, and the entire city around them is destroyed. Yep, that's the show. So I just. I loved this show. I loved it when I was younger. Like, I had a brand new appreciation for it when I got older. And I... God. I still like the last, uh, last like, two episodes. How it was, like, a two-parter. Where he goes into the future and everything. Yeah, I don't know. I didn't quite like the two-parter. It was, it was more of a serious kind of thing. And it was just... The very end was really funny. Because, like, he had, like, the future Magus. And, it, like, he's just, like, storming through the city. He's just like, let's see how this baby souped up. Yeah. He just starts basically blowing up the city just to test the new Magus weapons. Yeah, no, like, I I think... I think its strength lies in its, like, single episodes. Oh, yeah, because... Almost no episode is like sequential. Yeah, there, like there's, you, could, it's all over the place. Yeah, you could almost watch any episode and it would be fine. You there just are, have to. There are a couple. Watch. There are a couple from season two that reference season one, but those are isolated. Yeah. So I mean, it, it's they've only they only had two seasons. So I mean, it, it's relatively shorter, but it's definitely worth a watch yeah. if like. If you can understand the references. Yeah. So, so I recommend to everybody of legal drinking age, if you are younger than legal drinking age, I recommend it to you. If Get you're culture, interested, bitches. if you're interested on what our childhood was like. <laughs> Get cultured, bitches. Dude, that's what, like, that's kind of what it is. Like, it is a complete cultural, like, encasement of what the 90s were like as a kid. Like, it's kind of a scary thought, but, like, all of the references in there, like, referenced at least one thing that was, like, huge when I was, a, when, you know, I was going to school. Yeah. And to be fair, they didn't, it wasn't more or less Power Rangers, it was Voltron. Uh, well, okay, so Voltron, but, like. I just thought of that. I guess. They kind of had like all of the like superhero team giant robot yeah, the, stuff the, going like on. The, yeah, giant robot spandex five teammates. Yeah, but then there, you know, obviously the, uh, um, the what was it? The uh, the girls that one episode with Jamie, where Jamie's the hero. I oh god, I forgot that one. We're, okay, he's a hero in quotations. Like I'll, I'll have to go and try finding that. Was that season one or two? I'm not sure. But that was I'll, totally... I'll, that was, like... 
it was like they referenced Japanese, like the 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 introduction of anime into the mainstream, just so well. I think, like they, I just put I so liked many how parodies. I like how just after they get Megas, aliens just aren't really like a th- like nobody f- really cares. It's just like oh hey, it's aliens. Yep. Oh look, there's stuff happening. The one kid who constantly shows up in season two, just cool. He was in season one a couple times. Was he? Yeah. Okay. Whatever. It became it became a more prevalent thing in season two. He was like <laughs> every episode. He was almost in every episode season two. Yeah. Because <laughs> there was a whole lot of like patting your like them patting themselves on the back with this show. It was a good show. Yes, but there was like revelry in that. Like, <laughs> we did a good job, and we're gonna acknowledge it. Yep. Just keep this keep this going as egotistically as I can. Oh gosh. Uh, so, who is your favorite character? Oh, that's a tough one. It's a tough one because I know which one I am out of the group and i really want to like him but man do i hate him who jamie oh god like like i want to like him because like i fit that like perfectly when i was younger but like god he's fucking useless god i'm fucking useless i'm depressed now thank you for showing me this show that now i'm gonna go drink myself to death (laughs) To, to be fair, I think I'm more relatable to Kiva in the sense where it's like all situations I try thinking logically when the answer is very illogical, I always try overly thinking and analyzing stuff and any idea that is presented to me that makes absolutely no sense I'm always just like, why? Oh. Uh, like, we, we shouldn't, you shouldn't do that or we shouldn't do that we should do this instead. They're just like, nope but don't get me wrong, Coop was amazing. All right. Yeah, no, I'll I'll agree. Just all the characters were good. They they each had their own like I don't know, the the I think the problem with it was the enemies weren't very interesting. They could they couldn't be cuz they're only in for like one maybe a comeback episode. Yeah, which I think I think that's part of, like that was part of the problem though. Like, if, the, if we wanted to single out, like, problems with the show, like, not having a very good, like, centralized enemy was yeah, I kind could, of an I issue. Could, I could see that. Yeah, because it was all, like, technically the Glorf were the centralized enemy, Again, but they only... we forgot they about didn't them show for up. seven episodes. <laughs> Like, right at the yeah. beginning, just, oh, wait, kid, there's nothing here, all right. It's just, like, they mentioned at the beginning of the first episode after Coop annihilates them. It's just, like, oh, let's slip into, uh, like, subspace, into subspace and to repair our ship. And then, like, I think they made a couple episodes, and then they, uh, like, seven episodes later, they're like, oh, shit, we forgot that we had these guys. Yeah. It was so, I, I, I just think it suffered from that. Yeah, which I could, I can see that. I'll agree with you on that. Yeah, because I mean, like, you watch Batman not because Batman, because Batman's lame. You watch it because Joker and Two Face and like interesting villains. Which this one had interesting main characters, but the they had to be like the people to carry the show. Like. There just weren't interesting villains to, like, you know, distract you from, hey, fat joke for Coop. Like, <laughs> like there are so many. There are so many. I know, but, like, it became, it became very samey because they didn't have interesting, like, side spinoffs with the, and with the villains that they could have. I think that that could have been a thing. But how about that intro song? Oh my god. I had to watch, I had to listen to it like every time. I'm not gonna lie. It's so good. It's so nineties. Like I know. The whole just... show is stuck in the nineties. <laughs> god. Alright. 
So I think we've pretty much said our piece with this. Yeah, yeah, no, just... Uh, yeah, we're we're gonna leave it at that. Okay, so, um, next week. Oh yeah, you haven't even told me, like in advance, what it is. Um, I, I what kind of show do you want to watch? It's up to you. I gave you Megas XLR, so it's your your retaliation with it. Oh god, because I gave you one that you didn't like last time. Uh. I actually don't remember how many episodes were in this show. Let me just check real quick. I, it's not going to take me very long, but uh, I want to make sure lot. that it's. I, I want to make sure that it's not like a super long series because that would be awful. I think. Dude, episode. I... <coughs> okay, so there's. Uh, there's two seasons. Two seasons, oh. and it adds up to 22 episodes. Oh, that's not bad. What is it? Alright, so I'll give you, uh, Shinami Mao no Testamentio. Testamento. Y yeah, you're gonna have to Skype that to me. Okay, okay. alright. In English, The Testament of a Sister New Devil. Or, Of Sister New Devil interesting the testament of sister new devil so you can totally expect the best translations because they can't even translate the title correctly sure to be fair all right all right to be fair the trend the the translations are actually much better done in the show than they are on the box title but <laughs> <laughs> what is it? I'm, I'm trying to I'm trying to remember what it was from. It's a uh, 2015. Yeah, it, it had an original run from 2015, from January to December. Oh wow! So it's pretty modern. Yeah. Because Monster Masumi was uh, 15 as well. Yeah. So I I I have a feeling you'll like it. And uh, Testament of Sister New Devil because <laughs> fuck yep. English. <laughs> alrighty so I guess uh, join us next week when we do that thing there's boobs really yep it's, I wouldn't have guessed it's a theme actually yeah it seems like anything dealing with demons and devils always deal with freaking boobs and what's the problem with that I'm not saying there's a problem I'm just saying I'm stating a fact Anything else? No, I'm good. Oh, suggestions! Put them in the thing down below because we want more stuff to watch. God, your fucking egos need some stroking. I, w I didn't even ask for thumbs up. I was just saying, like, give us suggestions for shows because I think Sorry, I'm, I'm just... Sorry, I'm just... Right? You want this I'm to just... continue? You want, you want this to end? We can just stop right here. Okay. All right? All right, okay. so we might not see you next week. Peace out, bitches. <laughs> see you guys.